A man dies and goes to heaven. There are two lines. Each has signs over them. One sign says, men who were dominated by their wives. And the other one says, men who dominated their wives. The line for men who were dominated by their wives stretches back into the clouds with no sign of an end. The line for men who dominated their wives has no one in it. <laughs> the new man gets in the empty line. All the other men see and yell, what are you doing in that line? The new man turns around and says, I don't know, my wife told me to stand here. <laughs> <laughs> An old joke for sure, but one of my grandfather's favorite. Maybe because he knew he could stand in that short line, and no one would question him, for he was the true patriarch of our family. That's my grandmother. She's waiting for my grandfather to come home from food shopping. You so long. I was worried. You know, Pat Park's farther away to Wall Park. Oh, it's your own fault. You gotta go to Pathmark now. Did you get everything? Yes. Where are the cold cuts? Here. <laughs> what are they doing in your coat pocket? The card was full. I must have forgot to put them in the checkout. Louis Block, did you do it again? Do what? You know what I'm talking about. Where's the receipt? There are no cold cuts on this. Did you want to get banned from Pat Rock like you did for wall bounds? You stole those cold cuts. I didn't steal them. I just forgot they were in my pocket. Oh, don't pull that senile game on me. Your lucky wall bounds bought that fable. You'd be in jail right now, not just banned from their store for life. Well, you make it too big a deal out of this. I've been shopping in there for years. I paid him. <laughs> that was my grandfather's motto. I paid him up. After all, he was 82 years old, and he felt that through the years he had paid enough. Now, I don't want to give you the idea he was a crook. How can I put this? My grandfather was not one to pass up a good deal, even if he had to make up the deal himself. <laughs> Why did you set an extra place? Joey is coming for dinner. I told you this morning. Oh, I forgot. That's my cue. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, I made your favorite mouse ball soup and stuffed cabbage. She won't tell you, but she was up at 5 a.m. making it. I just came by to see you. Trouble? What trouble? It was nothing. Do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. Why don't you sit down? Oh, I ate already in the kitchen. I tasted so much. I'm not hungry. So how's work? Good. I got a promotion. I'm now a senior copywriter. Oh. Here. Page 141. I wrote that. Double up on double hits. Two <laughs> pair for $12.99. You wrote that? Yes. And they paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, not just that. I wrote the copy, too. That's just the headline. <clears throat> Too small. I can't read it. You read it. Nah, it's not that big a deal. You wrote it. I want to hear it. Double up on double knits. Two pair for twelve ninety nine. I read that part. The small part. Read it. For the man on the go, nothing beats the ease or elegance of double knit slacks. Whether going out in the town or going to work, these double knit slacks do double duty. And then there's all this stuff about the sizes and things. They pay you for this. <laughs> yes. Not everyone can do this, you know. I don't think you got it. Oh, no, I got it. Double duty, double niche. Very clever. Thank you. You need any money? No, Grandpa. Listen, I know they can't pay you much for this. If you need some money, it's all right. Just don't tell your Grandpa. No, Grandpa, I'm doing fine. Rose, Joey got a promotion at work. Ah, 
Ah. He's a senior copier. Uh, not copier, copywriter. You make me sound like a Xerox machine. Oh, that's wonderful, dear. I tell all my friends in New York that you're a famous copier. Uh, copywriter. <laughs> Never mind. Thanks. Uh, the, the cabbage is delicious. Do you have any more cabbage? Uh. No, no, it's okay. I'll get it. Do you need any money? <laughs> <laughs> no, Grandma, I'm doing well. Listen, I know they can't pay you much for this. Really, Grandma, I'm okay. Well, if you need any, it's fine. Just don't tell your grandfather. <laughs> So, Joey, how's your love life going? You getting any? <laughs> what? Listen, I drove a cab for 50 years. Sex wasn't invented by your generation, you know. Are you seeing it? Uh, no, not right now. I don't see why not. You're a good looking kid. I was in wall bombs, you know. I thought you were banned from wall bombs. I was wearing a hat and sunglasses. <laughs> they didn't recognize me. <laughs> they got some nice job there over there. Anyway, I was online, and standing in front of me was this man. Such a monkey face I never saw. And you know what? He had a woman. So? So? So it goes to prove that anyone can have a woman. If this monkey face can have a woman, anyone can. And you know what? What? She was a monkey face too. <laughs> Than him. Think about it. In this whole world, these two monkey faces meet, fall in love, marry, have kids. Kids? Oh, yes, I forgot to tell you, kids. And you'll never guess. Oh, I think I can. <laughs> the kids were monkey faces too. No, they were cute. A boy and a girl. Sometimes it happens like that. <laughs> two monkey faces meet, have cute kids. But when the kids marry, they have kids. Monkey face. <laughs> I've seen it happen, and sometimes it skips generations. Look at Ed Sheila. Their kids, monkey faces. Is that what happens? I always wondered. Well, you didn't know Sheila's father. He died before you were born. When we were kids, we went to the Bronx Zoo. They stopped me at the exit. They thought I was trying to steal one of the monkeys. <laughs> They're making that up. Well, a little. So they got in the gate, he wasn't that sure. <laughs> <laughs> you have some paper in that thing? Yes. Why? Nobody makes fun of you when you carry that thing around. <laughs> no. In my day, men didn't do that. Unless... Uh, Unless what? Well, you know. Oh, forget it. Listen. Buy yourself a nice briefcase to carry around. <laughs> I know they don't pay you much. Will you stop that? I am very well paid. And it takes skill to do what I do. Skill? To make things up about pants? Yes. I bet you can't do it. Get me some paper. I'll show you. Pleasure, double your fun. Double this, double this, double this. <laughs> and we can have two twins riding a bike in the ad. That would be good. It would make a good team. Maybe I should be doing this for a little. You can't use that slogan. You stole it from Double Mint Gum. I did. I thought I made it up. <laughs> Listen, writer, you have to write something for me and type it up. Why do you need to type? Uh, doctors uh, respect you more when they get a type letter. Not another doctor's letter. Yes. Just type this up and take it down, type it up. Dear Dr. Moskowitz, I have just received your bill for $1,400 to remove that little pimple from my back. A big little pimple apple. Your clothes, find the check for $10. I will pay you ten dollars until the bill is paid. <laughs> I am eighty-two years old, and I have paid enough. 
at ten dollars a month, you'll be a hundred and two before you pay him off. Well, if he wants to get paid, he has to keep me alive. This way, I give him a good reason. I give me good care. That wasn't a little pimple. It was skin cancer. He may have already saved your life. I escaped the Tsar of Russia when I was six years old. You think a pimple on my back is going to kill me? Just type it up and mail it. Did I ever tell you that story? Yes. I was six years old. My father was a milkman. I had five sisters. The oldest had married a tailor. The second one had fallen in love with a rebel who was banished to Siberia. The third one had married a soldier in the Tsar's army. A decree came down that said all the Jews had to leave. Well, the wait a minute, that's Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> it is. They made a show about my life? <laughs> Who knew? You're pulling my leg again. Well, you said you heard the story. I was trying to be interesting. That's okay. Tell me again. And he did. You know something funny? A few months later, I needed a new slogan for Double and Slacks. I was stuck, so to buy time, I gave them my grandfather's. Double your fun with double knit slacks, two pair for $12.99. They loved it. It was a full page in the holiday catalog. Thank God my grandfather never found out, or I would never have heard the end of it. <laughs> this is a nice place. <laughs> Why are you downtown? I like their food. Yeah, but to come all the way downtown for Chinese food? Chloe, look how much they charge for chow mein. You could get a whole meal by us. Oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't, Don't worry, worry about, about it. it! Has he got any new medication? No, I could barely get him to take the old ones. How'd you find this place? I passed it three times. It's very confusing with all that construction outside and at the front of the restaurant. Something told me about the place. What's the big deal? Can a grandfather take out a grandson for a nice meal? Okay, I'm sorry. Louie, do you want to share the shrimp with lobster sauce? Oh, you get what you want. I'll order on my own. Okay, that's it. <laughs> What's going on? Nothing. Only day when we leave, you two go first. I'll follow. Uh, it's wall bounce all over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's not wall bounce all over again. When I came downtown to get my check last week, I've had a friend who told me about the place. Since the construction, they don't know who's coming or going. The construction's almost finished. We don't have much time. <laughs> you don't think we're sneaking out of here without paying, do you? No, we're not sneaking. Okay, I'm sorry I misunderstood. When we leave, you walk out the front, I walk out the back. Who said anything about sneaking? It's the same thing. You're not paying. Keep your voice down. Twelve ninety nine for child made. Who do they think that kid? <laughs> they expect people to do this. It's built into the prices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very hungry. I'll just have the soup. Well, I am. I'll pay for it myself. If you're going to pay for it, we're not going to eat here. You think I was born with supper written on my forehead? Let's go. But I only want soup. 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 Five ninety nine for soup. It would have to have gold bullion in it for me to give them five ninety nine for soup. Let's go. Grandma, sit down. I'll treat you. I'll be waiting for you outside. Well, where are you gonna eat? I'll get a hot dog in the car on the corner. Are you crazy? Those hot dogs have been in that water since Nixon was president. Well, that's where I'll be. Grandma. Can I borrow her You did. Very good. I just have one question. Well, sure, Grandma. What? How could they pay you so much just to copy other people's writing? <laughs> just lucky, I guess. Uh, so how about the shrimp and lobster sauce? I'll just have this soup. And she did. 
She said it was the best soup she ever had. This is the best soup I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> of course, she never took back the money for the meal. My grandfather waited patiently outside and even made friends with the hot dog stand owner. As they walked away, I saw my grandfather reach in his pocket and give my grandmother a few dollars. She placed it in her purse, smiled, took his hand, and they walked off together. It's funny the things you remember. You never know. You didn't have to drive me. Your mother said you needed to pick up the car. Yes, but... Oh, watch it! You almost hit that car! It wasn't even close. Where is this repair shop? Uh, Grandpa, please look at the road when you're driving. Central Ave and Hartsdale Road. I've been driving for 68 years. Cabs didn't even have windows when I started. Yes, <laughs> yes I know. You told me. <laughs> paid $16 for that cab medallion and sold it for 36000 I know. Please watch it. You still drive like a New York cab driver. So what's wrong with that? What's wrong is you're 85 years old. That's what's wrong. Oh, God! Well, you realize. <laughs> when I came to America with your Uncle Max, do you remember the name of the town that we left? Uh, yes, Kahafka. Good, you listen. Max was 10 years older than me. It was hard for Jews to find work. I took a job as a cab driver. When I was old enough, I joined him in the business. In my day, we didn't have choices like you. Oh, great. It's starting to rain. Reach in the back. Take an umbrella. There's like a dozen of them. How many do you have? Yeah, from my cab days. Yes, but you haven't driven a cab in 10 years. How many did you have? 102. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many people leave umbrellas in cabs? This is the last of them. I have a drawer full of singles, single gloves, too. Why do you keep single gloves? Uh, in case somebody in the family loses a glove, they can try to match one up. <laughs> I'll pull up here. This is it. Okay. Now, before you go, reach into the glove compartment and get me those sunglasses. It's raining. Oh, why do you need sunglasses? Why do you think? I have to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so close. I'm going to eat it here with you tonight. It's not as good as your grandmother's. I know. What did you do today? I went to that place to see you, Sam. I don't like it. Why not? Mom said it's very nice. Everyone there is old. <laughs> what did you do there? Uh, played poker. Two cents, four cents. There was a big fight. Why? They said I didn't put in the bet. Did you? You too? I put it in! <laughs> what does Boris think he is? I never cheated anyone. Well, that's not exactly true. I never cheated anyone. Those stores? I didn't cheat them. Charging the public those prices? They think we're stupid? Go a cab for 50 years for, to give my money to them? Doctors, they used to come to your house when you were sick. Now you, you go to them and you spread your germs around. You're not sick when you go there, you're sick when you come back. Oh, all right, I, I didn't mean to get you going. If you don't like the center, why do you go back? Nancy likes it. Nancy? Is she that woman you've been seeing? Yeah. Is she nice? Uh, very nice. She's younger, you know. How old? Well, don't tell your mother, I told her 77. She's 72. Wow, <laughs> 16 years younger. You're doing better than me. <laughs> yeah, she thinks I'm 82. <laughs> How long till dinner? Uh, about a half hour. It's heating up. 
Did I ever tell you about the time I picked up Jackie and uh, the kids, uh, Charlie and Jenny? Uh, John, Don, and Caroline. Oh, yeah, that's right. Why do you call everyone Charlie and Jenny? Charlie Herzog and Jenny Goldstein. I don't know, just a habit. It's easier than trying to remember everyone's name. I was nine before I realized that you did that. I used to think to myself, why does everyone have the same name? You did? You want to hear the story? I've heard it already. Jackie hailed the cab down on Fifth Avenue and asked me to drop her off at Central Park West at the Dakota Building. She was visiting a friend there. The friend was pregnant and had gotten mixed up with a bunch of devil worshippers. And that's Rosemary's baby. Don't <laughs> tell me they made a movie about that too. Who <laughs> knew? Someday, someone is going to believe you. Ah, they already do. I'm a big hit at the senior center. They haven't seen many movies. <laughs> Wait, I, I got one. This is true. At the Dakota building, I picked up that beetle, uh, Jack Lemmon. John Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> and his wife, Shogi. Yoko. <laughs> are you going to let me tell you the story or are you going to keep it your <laughs> Okay, tell me. And he did. Nancy stayed around for a while. Until the stroke. He could still get around, uh, but it affected his speech. It was as if a light had gone off inside. Ever so slowly, there was less of my grandfather there. I still tried to get up there as much as I could. Grandpa, I hooked up the VCR so you can watch movies when you want. I got two here, Fiddler on the Roof and Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> Do you want to watch one? Yeah. Oh, good. And me too. Which one? This. Okay. <laughs> Me! <laughs> hey, yes, I know, Grandpa. You. You were six years old and living in a small village, Kahafka. And you and your brother set sail for America. It was 1904, and a decree came down from the Tsar that all the Jews had. My grandfather died not long after. Well, when I remember that old joke now, I remember it a little different. A man dies and goes to heaven. There are two lines. One line is long and stretches out into the crowd, into the clouds. And the other line has only one man in it, my grandfather. St. Peter opens the gate, looks in his book, and waves my grandfather in. All the other men start yelling, why are you letting him in? St. Peter looks in his book, and then looks up and says, That's Louis Block. He's paid enough. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that's true. That's the way I like to remember them. Memory is a wonderful thing. You can shape it any way you like. Maybe somewhere... He's still shopping by his own, his own rules, and my grandmother is waiting for him to come home. It's possible. Who knows? Grandpa, I wrote a play about your life. Louie, did you hear what he said? He wrote a play about your life. He did? Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> 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 